right, so we're going to look at one of my most beloved, favorite plant allies, um, sweet blue violet, and, um, and a couple of other species. Sweet blue is viola odorata, but this will be viola this and viola that. All right, and so let's go down to the ground where she humbly lives in the soil of the garden. Uh, she comes up in most people's gardens. She's really a loving plant. And maybe we have a hint for that in the beautiful heart. Let's look here. This is so lovely. In the heart-shaped leaves. And even though our physical heart is not shaped that way, we have that strong symbolic resonance, right, of that shape being about the heart, being about love. It also is approximately the shape of a woman's womb. Um, and Violet has medicine for that as well. So let's Let's just look at a couple of things. One, violet is delicious to eat. And violet grows in cool, shady areas, or grows best in cool, wet, shady areas. And this is how a plant will suggest to us things that it may do for us. So it's going to cool and moisten things in the body that need cooling and moistening. So for example, we might have um, a salad in the summer. And the more violet leaves and flowers, uh, and here we have purple flowers and white flowers. Uh, violet flowers, common violets will be, have yellow flowers, white, lavender, purple, and then a white one with kind of lavendery stripes that I have in another part of the garden. And um, so if I just put this in my salad, it's going to cool me down in hot weather. Um, but also violet is super high in uh, you know, it's, here's what's really funny. What I was trying to say was super high in salicylic acid, but what my heart and perhaps the violets wanted me to say was violet is super high in love. So violet is super high in love. And how violet helps humans is particularly when we're grieving. Violet has a way of helping us open to the grief, soften our armor, that might keep us from feeling grief, because when we can't feel the grief, we can't heal. Right? If we just repress it, it sticks around forever and it lodges in the body in all sorts of ways, including in growths. And so, interestingly, violet is a dissolvent that helps dissolve growths in the body. Lumps, bumps, cysts, tumors. Um, violet. So if I come to pick the violet, I go down. We use the above ground parts of violet, not the roots so much. Um, I actually don't use the roots at all. Some people do. But I pick it how I'm always showing you with the two hands so that you don't pull the plant out accidentally. And I use the stalk and the leaf and the flowers. This is kind of a wonderful identifier for violet. The leaves always curl in like this before they open. And even when they're open, they keep a little bit of that inward curl here. And I think of it metaphorically as the way we open, like if we don't feel safe, we open our hearts like kind of little by little by little by little by little. And then gradually we realize that having an open heart is actually the safest way to be. It doesn't mean we don't have boundaries or the ability to say no as well as yes, but it means we can say no keeping our hearts open. That's a, whole other, that's a whole other important teaching. But violet is really helpful for head pain, headaches. Um, I like to dry a lot of violet to have infusions in the winter. Again, cooling, moistening, um, soothing, and um, very nourishing to the, to the nervous system as well. Violet has an affinity not only for the head, but also for breast tissue. So oftentimes, this is a great herb for helping women who suffer from discomfort in their breasts around their menstrual cycle, whether they have cystic breasts or um, they get bloating there. So we drink violet um, in infusion or tincture it and take it that way. But also we can use it to help externally uh, to dissolve cysts. Um, it can be placed over breasts, over ovaries, and this is a really wonderful multi-multi-purpose plant to get to know.